Can you tell the American people that we're not headed for a recession? I can tell the American people that we are much better positioned when it comes to that recession question uh, than pretty much any other advanced economy I've seen. But probably more importantly, Wait, I so can you, tell so the American people. So you can't rule it that, out, is what I'm hold hearing. Hold on. Let, let, let me. Let, you can never rule anything out. So that, that's not really a relevant question. <laughs> Not a relevant question. That was Biden economic advisor Jared Bernstein earlier today refusing to rule out a potential recession in the near future. Someone in the Biden administration is actually being honest, I suppose. But almost on cue, stocks, stocks suffered their worst day of the year today, with the Dow tumbling more than 1,300 points. The sell-off comes after the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by half a percentage point yesterday, the biggest hike in two decades. But don't pay attention to the looming recession, 40-year high inflation, and the volatile stock market, says those so-called adults running our country. As the Democratic Party's social media team posted this cringy Star Wars-inspired video hyping Biden's dismal economy. It's titled Episode 46, Building Back a Better America. Give me a break. But seriously, while the Democrats are having fun working on their video editing skills, 60 percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Don't worry, though, because NBC News is offering real solutions to survive Biden's economy. Just get another job, Kelly. Hmm. More ways to make more money. Vic, mm -hmm. good morning to you. We're talking about the side hustle. The side hustle. So what's your criteria for like a good side hustle? What should people be looking for? Three things right off the bat. How much cash can you really make? What's the schedule? Is it going to fit in with your regular hustle? And finally, maybe this is a growth potential opportunity. Could you leverage it into a full-time job? Now you got to have a lot of hustles to get by in this administration. Joining us now is the CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Melissa, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. So, you know, today obviously was a, a rough day for our 401ks. Uh, all the gains from Wednesday have already been lost. Tell us your reaction to this. Uh, and do you think that it's going to take a red wave in November to turn things around? Well, here's the problem. Rates are going up. Rates have already gone up. And when rates go up, economic activity goes down. So that's definitely a problem going into the fall. And we're nowhere near the fall. We're just beginning the summer. Memorial Day is a few weeks away. So it's a long way between now and the time that people actually go to vote. And things aren't looking good for the market. You, you pointed out that the market sold off today. The rally yesterday, I thought, was totally fake because after Fed, the Fed chairman came out and said they were going to raise rates a half a point, the market rallied. I mean, that's really something that the, that the Fed hasn't done in almost 20 years to raise, raise them a half a basis points in one shot. They're looking at raising rates so often this year that it will impact the economy and it's going to slow growth. Remember, not only companies are going to be affected by this, but the consumer. With rising inflation, people are already paying more. And again, if companies have to pay more for borrowing costs, they're going to pass that cost on to the consumer. Melissa, I have to ask you a question about Jerome Powell, because you're right, after he made his announcement yesterday, the markets rose. But I think those traders went to bed last night, got up this morning and realized, hey, inflation is not transitory. They saw him yesterday blame inflation on COVID and on Putin's price hike. Um, but what they didn't see him take responsibility for is all the spending packages coming out of Washington. A lot have argued, like Larry Kudlow, that rates actually needed to be higher. He needs to be more aggressive in tackling this inflation and that the Fed needs to start buying uh, some or selling off some more bonds. What is your take on on how aggressive he's being? Is he being is he not being aggressive enough? Well, I really don't think they should be raising rates this much because, again, it's going to slow down the economy before they had rates too low. Now they're going to raise them too much. They can't seem to do anything right. Remember when last year they said that they thought inflation was going to be transitory at the beginning of 2021? I didn't believe that. And now they even seem even more out of touch. Either they're flat out lying or they're completely out of touch or both. And when they're lying to you, you know that it's super duper bad. Because at the end of the day, he, he said yesterday that they thought they were at the height of the peak of inflation? No, 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 no. First of all, I don't even think the real number is 8%. If you're a consumer, if you go to the store, if you buy anything at all, you know that some things have increased food, in particular, has gone up 20%. I've seen some food items going up 100%. 
just when you go shopping. And that doesn't even include oil and housing and all the other things that people pay for. And while it's great that people got the stimulus, it's not going to cover these rising costs. And as you know, when costs go up, it's really hard to bring prices back down again, except for something like oil. But again, they stopped the drilling. I mean, there's so many problems right now with this administration. I don't think that everyday people are not noticing what's going on. They are noticing what's going on. They're smart enough to notice what's going on. And then when people get their 401k statements and the stocks have dropped, they're going to be very upset about that going into the election. And I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying we could talk about it again in a couple of months. But there's a possibility. Now, I'm not saying 100%, but there's a big possibility that the stock market does not make another brand new all-time high for the rest of 2022. And that would be devastating, really, for investors and markets because we've been so strong for so many years. Look back when Trump got elected in 2016. Here we are, 2022. The market's gone up really ever since then and made so many new highs. We haven't made any new highs at all this year in the market, and we're getting late in the year already. Melissa, I've got about uh, 30 seconds, but advice for everyday Americans uh, trying to brace uh, themselves through this? Advice for for someone, if you're young, keep your money, invest in the market, the market will come back. And again, as far as getting second jobs and things like that, I actually think that's a great idea. I mean, you've got to do what you can do to survive. You've got to be able to pay the bills at the end of the day. Okay, Very Melissa, true. thank you so much for joining us. Everyone needs to go out and get a side hustle and then stay in the market <laughs> if you're in the market and you're young. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> So, Jen, our 401ks aren't the only thing running that's running out of money. Uh, that is so true. A perfect storm has sparked a worldwide warning of starvation. Could civilization be on the brink? Dr. Michael Savage will join us next on Prime News.